Mm. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to spend this moment with you. I'm Halcyon, this is Hug Nation. This is our weekly heart recalibration and attempt to realign with our highest best selves. Today, I wanna to talk about the optimism tax. Now, the reality is that bad things happen. Unfortunate things happen. Bummers happen to you. And often, some of the most frustrating things that happen to you are a result of your trusting. Let's say you leave something out, not thinking about, and someone takes it. You lock your bike up, and someone clips the lock. Or you just leave it outside for just a few seconds, and someone takes it. There's so many bummer things that happen in life that are the result of being trusting. And the instinct often when that happens is to constrict, to close up and say, I am not going to let that happen again. I'm going to be more careful, more guarded, and less trusting of my fellow human beings. And that's a bummer response. In fact, that result is infinitely more costly than whatever it is that you lost. Instead, instead of constricting and going, <laughs> instead try to go, I guess I have to pay the tax. The optimism tax is a sporadic payment when you're taken advantage of. And what you get in return is the ability to trust the universe, to believe in your fellow humans, and to have faith that everything is happening as it should. Paying the optimism tax can sting, but it is way more painful to live in that state of on guard and always worrying, are someone gonna take advantage of me? Is someone gonna take advantage of me? It ends up being such a good deal to just recognize that every once in a while, I'm gonna pay the optimism tax, I can let it go and not Instead, it's, it's a merely a financial transaction, in, out, doom, doom. it takes a few seconds of frustration in your life and it's over. Instead of this nagging frustration as you try to get over that event, and then the lifelong dip and woe of worrying and stress. And Now, the reality is there are scammers out there. There are people that are gonna lie about needing a bus ticket when they really want booze. There are people that are gonna clip your lock. And I'm not saying you don't get smarter and wiser. I'm not saying you don't buy a better lock. I'm just saying buy the better lock, and then when it's locked, let it go. Don't think, okay, I'm not gonna take my bike anywhere that I can't bring it inside. Ugh. Because in that scenario, you are constantly thinking, you're constantly reframing, you're constantly evaluating and judging the world from a I don't trust people perspective. It's the opposite of rose-tinted glasses. There are scammers out there, and you don't want to be a sucker, so you want to be smart and critical, but I'm saying it's okay to be a sucker sometimes. It's okay to be taken advantage of sometimes. It's kind of like falling in love. Yeah, you gotta risk, you gotta open your heart, you gotta be willing to have your heart broken, otherwise you never get the joy. The solution to having your heart broken isn't closing off. The solution to losing stuff isn't protecting yourself and living in a walled world. It's simply recognizing that that's part of life. And the idea of an optimism tax lets that happen so that you can just, ah, I know what's happening right now, and let yourself move through the frustration so much quicker. I think the cost of an item that you might lose is generally much less than the impact it has on your psyche and your general happiness. It's so easy to kick yourself or be frustrated or like those jerks or mm -mm, and, and you get so worked up into the scenario of, of being taken advantage of, of being stolen from, of, of, of having your good nature taken advantage of. That is, that indignation burns. 
But if, but if, if you can, the, the, the optimism tax, it's like a, a, an instant get out of jail free for that frustration. And paying for it is something that you should do joyfully because it is priceless. And the truth is, you never really know if losing that item is actually a kind of a good thing. I mean, who is to say that the challenges resulting from that lost bike steer you in a direction of growth or let you release some attachment that's causing you suffering? In the grand scheme of things, it is impossible to know if losing something and being taken advantage of isn't actually a gift. That lesson is actually a little bit more challenging and difficult, which is why the optimism tax is such an awesome tool. It's just part of life. Just like paying your income tax, you can be angry about it and frustrated about it all year, every time you look at a paycheck, going, Aah! or you can just recognize that is part of life. And when voting time comes, you know, I might select candidates, or you know, if I get the opportunity to sign something that affects my taxes, sure, take action when appropriate, lock up the bike when you can, but don't live in a state of frustration with things that are inevitable. What is inevitable? Death and taxes. Let's add optimism tax into that, and that way you can just live a much more carefree life. This idea will change your life. It will make your life happier. Guaranteed. I promise I won't steal your bike. Even to teach you this valuable lesson. Side note on bike theft. My pink fur bike was stolen. Someone clipped the lock and stole it from my porch. And I'll admit, I had some frustrations and pain involved. It's kind of like losing a pet. But I also was trying to embrace the optimism tax. And something magical happened. As I let it go, I was contacted within 18 hours and the bike was returned. A neighbor came to the door of one of my other neighbors saying, hey, did there used to be a fur bike around here? The police recovered it as part of some big you know, bike theft ring. They went to a bike shop and said, hey, does anyone know anyone who's got a pink fur bike? And it went through the community. Within hours, someone came to our building and I was reunited with my pink fur bike. Amazing. So, just a little advice. Forget low jack, cover your bike in pink fur. Anti-theft at its most adorable. Tommy brought up another aspect that can help with optimism tax, which is that if you really practice gifting, you can soothe some of the frustration with the idea that this person needed it more than you. And if somebody's in a position where they are going to take something, they are so out of alignment with what truly matters, with what is bringing them joy, that they are probably suffering and sick spiritually. And so it sometimes helps to come to a place of compassion for this person who's made a choice that pushes them away from a path of joy. Having a bike means very little when the way to get it is of hurting people and taking from other people. But many people are you know, in a state in their lives where they're so in survival mode that knocking other people down, taking advantage of lying, manipulating, scamming, outright theft is acceptable in their moral view. Either because they feel so wronged or they're so lost or they're so out of touch. Um, and so it doesn't bring the bike back, but it can help ease the anger when you can see that person as someone who's hurting. Bike theft is creative renewal. Exactly. Well, I think that any hardship you can frame as renewal. You know, when you, when you choose to throw something into fire and let it go, that, you know, we know that is a cathartic thing. It's tougher to make the mental leap from be, I mean, that thing taken from us 
to see it in the same cathartic purging. But I think that can be a huge thing too. You know, I know people that, you know, almost have wished for house fires to free them from the, the, the trap of all their stuff. Of course, I know people that have lost their things in house fires, and it was incredibly traumatic and something that you know, haunts them for their lifetime as you think about all the things that you know, are gone. But if you can get to that place of, ah, I was attached to this thing. My grandpa never locked the door to his retirement Little, uh, his retirement, what did he call it? He, he called it his dorm room. And he never locked the door to it because he had that attitude of like, if somebody needs it more than me, then they can take it. I don't have anything that is that important to me. He would only lock it if, if you visited him and, and he, you, know, you brought, I brought my computer gear, then he would lock it because he didn't want to, to lose other people's things. But his attitude was, you know, I am not attached to these things at all. And if that is a scenario where somebody needs it, then, then they should have it, and I'll figure something out. I'll, I'll get what I need. And, you know, when you look at these certain spiritual paths, the, can you think of any that say, Okay, to get more in line with spirit, you're going to want to accumulate. You're going to want to get your stock portfolio fat. You're going to want to get a lot, maybe two or three jet skis. You know, even Jesus said that, you know, a rich man has about as easy a time of getting into heaven as a camel going through the eye of a needle. And you look at the way that Buddhist monks practice with you know, no possessions but an alms bowl. And you can kind of get the sense that, all right, maybe anything that is taken from me is a gift of sparing me from attachment. Yeah, keep saying that over and over until you believe it. It can help. All of these things are help, but I'm telling you the most important, the most beneficial and powerful tool to get over loss and, and, and being taken advantage of because it's more than just the loss. It's that frustration like, oh, I was so stupid. Oh, I can't believe people do that. Uh, and that what that does to constricting your psyche and in doing so makes the world a darker, less friendly place. The optimism tax is the best tool for that. Just, oh, guess I didn't realize it was, it was time again, time for some optimism tax. Now, that's gone. Back to enjoying life, trusting people, and loving the world. Oh, that is priceless. I love you. Let's have a hug. Grab yourselves by the shoulders. Hmm. Have a moment of gratitude for this body that lets you feel things, that lets you ride that bike and recognize that this body is just just the surface, the shell of who you are. And beneath that is another shell, the shell of your personality and your, the roles that you play, your identities. And sometimes there's people out there who play a role that is so frustrating and so grates on your nerves. Maybe it's entitled thief who feels it's okay to take your bike. But for this moment, let's recognize that even that identity, that who am I, is just another shell over our true selves, our divine selves, the light that shines through us, the love that shines through us. And let's recognize that that thief and that obnoxious politician and everybody we meet is just a bunch of shells on top of a brilliant, loving light and let's try to see the light in people. Let's try to let it out as we heal them through our love of them. And let's try to forgive ourselves and love ourselves. So let's take three breaths. 
as single cells in this massive organism, this massive beams of light, billions of beams of this perfect light. And in these three breaths, we'll just be that light, not our identities, not these physical bodies, just rays of light. Inhale through the nose. Last one. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the love warriors, happy hug nation. I love you. Just you being in the world makes me optimistic. I don't even need a bike. Please follow me. Please share, yeah. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be in my underwear. No, I shouldn't have said that when I was trying to ask you to be nice. I think you'll picture me in my undies and then I'll pay the price. This is why you write things down first and don't do impromptu songs. Yeah.